got a 2017 Chevy Silverado L5P Duramax and about 140,000 miles on it. Uh, this truck came in, check engine light on, D-rate. It, it, it has a couple of emission codes. And I'll tell you right up front, this thing has a couple of failed EGTs and it also has a failed SCR. And so we are going to set about diagnosing this. My first code is a P118B, which is a temperature sensor performance code for my DPF. And then the next code I've got is this P2002 for DPF low efficiency. And before I go too crazy on trying to diagnose these, I'm just going to take a quick look at my EGT. So I'm going to do a road test uh, or command a regen on the vehicle so I can move the temperature sensors through their whole range and diagnose those those two codes probably as a pair. The last code I've got is this P20EE, and I'll tell you straight up front that this thing has a failed SCR, and uh, we are going to be looking at the NOx sensors, and then True knocks out the tailpipe in order to diagnose that one. So let's get started on these temperature sensor codes. So thankfully I have this truck uh, on an overnight uh, cold start, and so I roll the key on, and I grab my EGTs and one through five. Now I don't have my DPF particulate matter uh, sensor, temperature sensor up here, but uh, I got my first five and all of those key on engine off are all within a couple of degrees of each other. And so at first glance, I'm looking at these and going, you know what, uh, these aren't so bad. So I fire the truck up and uh, sorry for the change in picture format here, but I wanted to drag that particulate matter sensor temperature sensor in there. And uh, so uh, notice all my EGTs are, you know, still not looking terrible, right? Warmer by the engine, colder as you get away. But look at the particulate matter sensor, temperature sensor on the bottom. And that thing is already 400 degrees when everybody else is 200. And so that's our first sign of impending disaster, right? My guy who's all the way in the back can't be 400 degrees as soon as I roll that key on. So, uh, so there's our first sign of trouble. Now, at this point, I've commanded a regen, a mobile regen, and I'm driving this thing down the road. And again, my temperatures don't look crazy, right? I got uh, 660 out of the engine, so that's normal at cruise. I got a little over 1,000 degrees in back of the oxidation cat on EGT number two. So my DPF is lit, right? I'm dosing. And then my exhaust, you know, there's a lot of mass there, and so my exhaust hasn't warmed up. And so my EGTs, you know, drop off slowly as you get further away from the engine. So at this point, again, you know, nothing looking terribly out of bounds other than that particular matter sensor all the way in the back that hasn't moved uh, temperature at all. Now that I'm at active regen temperatures, the problem with my EGTs definitely becomes evident. So look what we've got. You know, I've got... Uh, uh, 779 coming out of the engine, 1,050 coming out of the back of the oxidation catalyst, and then EGT drops down. That thing's uh, 900 degrees. And then if you look at EGTs 4 and 5, they're both, you know, 1,050. So I've got a cold EGT in the middle of my exhaust system, you know, EGT number 3. So that thing's shot. It's off by a couple hundred degrees, and that's what's causing my both those EGT related trouble codes. It makes it think that the DPF isn't doing a regen, you know, that because it's not getting hot at all. And, uh, and also the code for that cold EGT. And then also notice the DPF, a particular sensor temperature sensor on the bottom, that thing's still at 500 degree range. That thing's never getting hot. It does come up a little bit in temperature at the very end, but too little too late. So, uh, so what's the story with those first two codes is going to be two failed EGTs. All right, with those first two codes diagnosed, now it's time to go after this P20EE, the NOx catalyst efficiency code, or a NOx catalyst efficiency below threshold. Basically, it's saying I don't have good NOx reduction. So I get, grab my reductant data, I build a little custom data list, and notice I've got uh, NOx concentration, parts per million, sensor number one on the top, uh, sensor number two, the outlet on the bottom. And then in the bottom left-hand corner of the screen, I have my gas bench, uh, which is uh, uh, going to measure true knocks out the tailpipe. Now, the first thing I do when I go after a NOx catalyst efficiency code is check the quality of my DEF. 
And so uh, I yanked the def injector out of this thing uh, in order to do the volume test, which you'll see in a second. And I sampled some def, and this thing uh, tests perfectly here. 32.5% on the nose. Now, oddly, this def injector is really crusty. Uh, kind of unusual for a Duramax. Way more common probably on a Cummins than on one of these. But, uh, uh, but it did not affect the spray pattern, as you'll see here in a second. So here we are running the def fluid quantity test. You can see this def injector is hanging in the air. We are going to catch the def in a cup and then measure the volume in the graduated cylinder. And this thing passes just fine. With those preliminary checks out of the way, I can now go road test my vehicle and watch my data. So again, top right is uh, inlet NOx sensor. So this is NOx out of the engine. Uh, outlet NOx is NOx sensor number two. That's the next one down. Uh, and then bottom left-hand corner is my gas bench. And this is my true NOx reading out the tailpipe. So I finally find a nice flat stretch of road where I can get uh, a good road test in. So I can see, you know, nice even numbers, uh, flat, not jumping all over the place, and get a chance for my gas bench to catch up too because it's about a 10-second delay really between front and rear. So if I can get nice, flat, steady driving, I am generally in business. So, uh, so notice my front knock sensor is staying in the 200 to maybe 250 range. And the federal spec is I got to have an 85% reduction. For our purposes, for nice round numbers, I'm going to go 90% reduction, which means if I got 200 out the front, I got 20 out the back. 300 out the front, 30 out the back. And if it's over that, of course, then I've got trouble. So notice here, 250 out the front, 130 out the back. Uh, my numbers are way, way high. Now notice uh, as my outlet NOx sensor, you know, on the bottom right jumps. About 10 seconds later, you'll see the NOx reading follow on the bottom left-hand corner. So that's saying that the outlet NOx sensor is reading correctly and my gas bench confirms it. And again, I need this because my outlet NOx sensor has crosstalk to ammonia. I mean, when I inject, inject DEF into the exhaust, if any of that DEF makes it through the SCR, the rear NOx sensor measures it just like it's NOx. So here we go. I got another bump in there, 250 up the front, 130 out the back. And you'll watch my gas bench here in about 10 seconds jump up in order to match that. It probably won't go as high as 230 because uh, we have, you know, dilution that happens inside the exhaust and stuff. But, uh, but I get a nice spike. And so steady numbers. I have, I don't know, a little more than probably 50% reduction. Uh, sometimes maybe a little better than that, maybe 70% reduction at best. Um, but uh, I don't have failed knock sensors on this. My knock sensor readings are credible. Outlet knock sensor agrees with my gas bench, and I've got a failed SCR on this 140,000-mile Duramax.